All right, hello. So I'm excited to create this, what I want to be quick kind of webinar for you. And so the intention of this presentation today is to give you some tips and strategies and actionable things that you can do. And then by the end, if you are interested in how can I get more of Heather, how can I dig deeper into the step-by-step -step strategy and also the accountability and the coaching, I'm going to tell you how to do that. So you may want to get out a pen and paper. You can definitely pause this um, and go at your own pace, but there's going to be some really good tangibles that I want you to think about. Okay. So the power of feeling good, why we can no longer pretend that we don't have time to take care of ourselves. So I call this the balanced life framework. I actually don't believe in balance, but everyone says they want balance from me. And I'm like, listen, they're like, I feel more balanced. I feel more aligned. I'm like, I get it. I just think balance has this perfectionism to it. So the word drives me nuts. But I really want you to start thinking about alignment and integration of your life, right? We live in such cultural extremes. We have this all or nothing, go, go, go. Burnout is so prevalent. We're neglecting ourselves. We're neglecting our relationships. And then when life explodes in our face, we're like, oh, how did I get here? So I solved that problem for women. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how, what I do, and of course, the tips and strategies that I'm going to give you can if implemented consistently, lead to increased focus, productivity, and creativity. So I want you to live a life where you are physically, mentally healthy, where you are emotionally stable. And I want you to be able to feel confident to maintain a healthy, sustainable work-life balance um, reduce stress, lower the risk of burnout, promote better and physical mental well-being, and ultimately lead to a happier, more fulfilling life. This process will also help you develop those stronger relationships. So whether it's parenting, a partnership, just friendships in general, but more importantly, people don't talk about this, is the relationship with yourself, right? To find that sense of fulfillment and purpose. So this is a little bit about me, public speaker, author. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen these glasses. I got them on Amazon. They're for, um, what do you call it? Like I get seasick and travel sick and whatever. I don't know. You put seasick glasses and this is what you'll come up with and they actually work. Um, run retreats. I'm raising three boys. Um, there's a picture of me in the gym, a place that I don't thoroughly enjoy to be, but it's these emotionally uncomfortable habits as I like to call them. Um, and my husband, who came into my life when I was a single mother, um, my son was around two years old, and this man has, uh, yeah, I tried to get rid of him so many times, and he keeps sticking around. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, actually, I should probably tell you the book, Dying to Be a Good Mother. So in 2013, I had stage four cancer. Um, previous to that, I became a mother when I was 18 and I just remember feeling like I'm already failing as a mother. I'm already doing this backwards and I really didn't want to, I didn't want to fail and I didn't want my son to, uh, live out his life, um, because a certain way because of my, um, weaknesses per se. And so I became, I have fought, to learn how to live. I have fought to learn how to feel alive. I have fought to discover how to develop deep connection in my relationships and love myself. Okay. When you think about, this is what I want you to think about right now. When you think about managing your time and energy, how does your body and your mind react? So before we dive into this, I want you to know that as a coach, so my former uh, work as a social worker, I used to be a social worker. I worked with families, high-risk families, um, and I really started to see and understand children's behavior. And then when I started my business, I was more centered around parent coaching. And so that's my love. That's my where I come from. And so I could see a child's behavior. It doesn't matter if they're 2, 10, 13, 20, doesn't matter. Um, and I can tell you what's really going on and 
and how to solve that problem. Um, that's what I love doing. That's where a lot of people come to me. There's, I attract a lot of families with neurodiverse children, like brains, and this is about beyond the diagnosis. So how do we still create, not project all of our stuff onto us? But as I started working, um, in my business, I started to attract a lot of professional women raising children. So these are women working in corporate or self-employed. And what I noticed is they would say, Heather, I don't have time to implement these strategies. So there's a two part series here. I want you to feel successful both at home and in your work. And time and energy management is a huge part of that. So this is just one bucket of your life. There could be so many other things. It could be money. It could be uh, relationships. It could be fulfillment, like spirituality. I'm, I'm big into spirituality. And um, if we don't feel like we have enough time and energy, we're always going to feel restricted. So I just want to ask you this question one more time. When you think about managing your time and energy, how does your body and your mind react? If you, if your reaction is like, I feel so spacious and free and open, great. You've probably done some personal development work. If you're like, my body feels restrictive, it feels tired, it feels fatigued, it feels like pressure, it feels achy, and your mind is like, I don't know how that's going to happen. I want you to see if your reaction is expansive or if it's restrictive. Okay, that's all I want you to do. So I want you to visualize this. Whether you believe it to be true right now, what if? What if your life could feel expansive? What if you felt fulfilled? Doesn't matter what type of work you're doing. You can be self-employed. You could work for somebody else. What if you are in relationship with people who maybe don't agree with you and they have, you know, maybe very negative energy and you know how to manage that. You know how to not let the energy of others affect you. What if you are um, managing a team and your team is going through some stuff and you know how to support them? What if you actually attracted and knew exactly where to focus your energy and attention to buy back your time, feel energized and fulfilled without neglecting your family's needs? So... If you would have said that to me like 10 plus years ago, I would have said, yes, that's the dream. I want the dream. Tell me the dream. How do I get there? Um, I wouldn't have necessarily believed you that it was true. And being on the other side, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter what house you have. It doesn't matter what car you have. Um, Learning how to reverse engineer how you want to feel is 100% possible and you do not need to blow up your life to make that happen. So I work with a lot of women who come in and they're like, I've done a lot of personal development work and we take it to the next level. So pain and discomfort are not the goal. I truly believe that we live in a culture addicted to suffering. And when I say pain and discomfort... I mean, my podcast, my brand is called Emotionally Uncomfortable. There's a difference between being emotionally uncomfortable because you are going to the next level of your life and it's like you're busting through resistance versus choosing suffering, choosing to live in fear. But it's a skill to learn how to reverse engineer your life and that's what I teach people. So I just want to show you this quick um, graph. It's called the Sustainable Ambition Theory. And as you can see, there's a red dot. It says survival mode, momentum, thrival, and creative abundance. And this is something that I created in my TED talk, my TEDx talk, after my cancer diagnosis. So this was like 2018. And um, it's called Dying to Be a Good Mother. You can find it on YouTube. Um, But when I was writing the talk, I was like, where was I in my life? So I want you to consider all these buckets in your life. You have work, parenting, health, time, energy, money, um, just like think about all these little buckets, right? And then your children might have buckets you're managing, like their health, if they have special needs or diagnosis or whatever it is. Um, There's lots of buckets. And 
I want you right now to self-assess where you feel you are in those buckets. So example, when I started my, when I was diagnosed with cancer, um, my physical health was in a survival state, okay? I was living in survival mode. My career and parenting and my marriage were probably in a state of momentum because I was actively working on it. I had coaches, I was going to therapy, I, like, I was invested in making those things better. So some areas of my life were in a state of momentum or thrival. Um, I was also in a state of sur uh, financial survival mode. So when crisis hit, when something happens, then everything kind of knocks down a little bit, okay? So my diagnosis, my health suffers. Boom, I'm in a crisis state because I was in a survival mode, so now I just, boom, go down, right? So think about your daily life. Kids get sick. If you're living in a state of, like, thrival and you feel like you have more than enough time, energy, money, and your kid goes to school, gets a little, you know, bug or whatever, and you need to take the day off of work. Boom, you jump down to a state of survival. What I often see, or sorry, a state of momentum. What I often see is everyone is living in a state of survival mode. Some are living in a state of momentum in most buckets of their life. So when shit hits the fan, and sometimes it's mild inconveniences, like, or, you know, I'm in the sandwich generation now where I'm taking care of my aging parents plus my children. And yes, my children are getting older, but um, big elephant in the room, you know, you got to be on your emotional game when they come to, to teenagers, right? So I got to take care of myself, my kids, and my aging parents. So if I'm not living in a state of thrival or creative abundance, and then something happens to my parents' health, God forbid, Boom, I can drop down to thrival or momentum because I have the resources, time, money, and energy to still continue. And yes, I'm going to drop down, but I'm not going to go down to a state of crisis. So people usually come to me when they're in survival mode. Their, parent, their children's behavior is struggling. Their mental health is struggling. They're on the verge of burnout. Their relationship is struggling. Uh, money, time, energy, whatever that is. And what I do is I help my clients get from survival mode so that when shit happens, you're not in a crisis state. I do not want you to get diagnosed with cancer. I want you to get up here to creative abundance. So this is what we do. We go through the process over and over again until you get up here and then you feel confident, energized, and alive and you know what you're doing. So I want you to just think of the buckets of your life, money, time, energy, relationships. Where are you currently living? Okay. Okay. Part of the balanced life framework, and this is, I go into strategy, I go into step-by-step, -step, we hold you accountable, everyone gets a coach and a mentor, you have access to me. I just talked about survival, momentum, thrival, and abundance. These are the four pillars I want you to think about when it comes to boundaries, okay? So a lot of people talk about confidence. Confidence is, comes from the consistency of action. The reason why we're not consistent is because our uh, emotions right here, emotional freedom, gets in the way. And so if you don't know how to manage your emotions, it's going to affect your action. And if you don't know how to work through that, you are never going to be able to achieve the quote unquote balance that you desire. So the four pillars are boundaries, time and energy management, emotional freedom, and living with a sense of purpose, okay? So we have a framework where we get you in alignment and essentially we want you to get to the state of abundance in all four of these, okay? So sometimes people come in and they're in a state of survival mode in all four. We have a little um, quiz that you take so you know where to focus your energy and attention. And for a season in your life, it might be you're working really hard on boundaries. And then it might be working, you know, how do we get that sense of impact and purpose? And just a quick little note here, you do not need to quit your job right away to um, get that sense of impact and purpose. Okay? All right. This is a tip for you. I always get uh, the question of overwhelm, like how do I manage my overwhelm? Quick tip, pen and paper, two minute timer on your phone, brain dump. I want you to brain dump everything that is on your mind. 
And oftentimes I will put little quadrants on my piece of paper, like make little um, boxes. So if I'm like, I have to make that dentist appointment for so-and-so, the dog needs this, da 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 like, or it might just be a whole bunch of work tasks. It might just be crap in your mind. Just brain dump it out on a piece of paper. And then I'm telling you right now, that can decrease overwhelm. Then from there, you can learn which actions, where to focus your energy and attention next. And that's, um, I go deeper into that with my energetic time management strategy. Okay, journal prompts. These are three journal prompts. You are welcome to take a picture of this if you're watching it on the desktop, obviously. Well, you can take a screenshot too if you're watching it on your phone. Uh, you're also welcome to tag me on Instagram at Heather Chauvin if you want, just so I know you watch this. Um, I really encourage you to do these journal prompts. You may love journaling. You may hate journaling. I get, you know, 50-50 from people. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if, in a perfect world, and if anything was possible? So the difference I find with therapy and coaching, so I come from a social work therapy model, and the reason why I, I love, okay, I always say you don't go to the dentist for a broken arm. And I believe that's the same for therapy versus coaching. So I want you to really consider this. If you've never gone to therapy before, I really I, go to therapy. Um, if you have been in therapy, but you feel like you're not moving forward, it may be time to consider more of a coaching model. Again, interview the people and do your research on the people that you hire. But sometimes when I say this to people, like these journal prompts, it can actually be really intimidating. So I like to use the one, wouldn't it be nice if? Wouldn't it be nice if, two minute timer on your phone, and I want you to write down everything that comes to mind. It could be something as simple as, wouldn't it be nice if it was sunny outside? Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to make dinner tonight? Wouldn't it be nice if, I made a million dollars. I didn't have to work. Whatever it is. Wouldn't it be nice if my kids didn't yell at me? I don't care. I want you to just write out. I'm not asking you what you want. I'm asking you what your soul is craving. And that is really where the magic starts to happen. And all of this leads to one thing. How you want to feel. So I'm starting to implement and show you a little bit about my energetic time management process. Danielle Laporte her book, The Desire Map, came out right before my diagnosis, and it was all about, well, this quote just stood out to me. It's not about the goal or the outcome, it's the feeling. So one thing that she used to say is, it's not the bigger house that you want, it's the space. It might be the space, or it might be the status, or I don't know, but it's like there's a feeling, there's a desire, right? I talk about desires, soul cravings. There's a desire um, aligned with the thing that you want. You can go after the money. You can go after a specific relationship, uh, connection or feeling, or you can want your children to show up a certain way or your partner or yourself, but it, there's actually a feeling. So I help you focus on the feeling and reverse engineer that. And that is where fulfillment comes in. Another quick tip or exercise that you can do is take out a piece of paper Put a line in the middle of the piece of paper, write not this on the left-hand side, and then write this on the right-hand side at the top. Write your not this list. What are you fucking done with? Not this. And it's funny because um, I talked about this years ago on my podcast, and it was one of the most highly downloaded episodes and I was like, write your not this list. Everybody knows what they don't want anymore. So write it out. What are you done with? Your not this list is different than your wouldn't it be nice list. Your wouldn't it be nice list is like, wouldn't it be nice? That's like your dreams, your goals. Your not this list is what you are willing and ready to change. And that is where I help people. Because you know what you don't want. So let's start reverse engineering how you want to feel instead. And then flip it. Wouldn't it be nice if I got a, you know, not this, no more sleepless nights. Great. How do you want to feel? When I wake up, I want to feel rested. Great. Let's make a plan and let's hold you accountable to make it happen. So 
going back to your wouldn't it be nice list. So you're going back to that wouldn't it be nice list. You have it written down. What's the feeling? You're going to start seeing commonalities. These are what Danielle Laporte calls core desired feelings. And we use this in um, our energetic time management process. So wouldn't it be nice if I had a good night's sleep? What is the feeling that you're after? Rested. Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to work Fridays? What is the feeling you're after? Spacious. Okay. No more hustle culture, no more burnout, no more feeling like a failure and never feeling good enough. These are cultural epidemics. These are not the goal. And yet people, these are symptoms, okay? So when I feel like I'm burning out, I know I've pushed it too far and that is my cue to get back in alignment. Um, Some of these, like, yes, there's feelings and feelings are not fact, but you do not need to hustle in order to make shit happen. I talk a lot about my 10 minute habit and my 60 minute profit rule inside of our programs. And this is an image from a really good book that you should go read if you are interested. It's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. There's his website right there, jamesclear.com. Atomic Habits is really about the science behind habit formation. And this relieves all the pressure and the hustle and the motivation. Like people are like, I just want, you're so inspiring. I want to be motivated. I was like, "Uh, you know, sometimes doing the shit you're supposed to do consistently is so boring. But here's the thing. A year from now, okay, the power of tiny gains. A year from now, if you just try to do shit consistently, which is why coaching is so essential because people are like, I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing it. Great. That's when you know you need to hire help. I have so much help. And, you know, when I started, I had no freaking money. We're not going to talk about what my beginning was like, but I had absolutely no money. I just knew I didn't want to feel like shit anymore. And I could see the train wreck of my life coming if I didn't start now. And, um, this was nine years before my diagnosis and parenting was the trigger for me. And then it was my career and I just kept investing. Um, So the power of tiny gains, if you are doing a little bit every single day, boop, 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 you get 1% better every day. If you do nothing and you stay the exact same person you are today, one year from now, you actually go down. So even if you do nothing, you decrease. So habits are happening regardless if they're life enhancing or life decreasing. You get to choose. Are you going to take responsibility for how you want to feel? Or are you going to just sit there and do nothing and slowly deteriorate? So now step three, what you had your wouldn't it be nice list. You're clear on your feeling. Now we're going to take action. So we break this down even more inside of our coaching. You have me as your coach. You have your mentor. You know exactly where you need to focus your energy and attention And then you're going to focus on your energy and attention and your feelings are going to come up. That's where people sabotage themselves. Um, I'm a huge fan of the emotional guidance scale. It's from the book Ask and it is given by Abraham Hicks. I love Abraham Hicks. If you are not familiar, go follow Abraham. Um, But here's the thing. People want to feel joy, passion, enthusiasm, optimism, hopefulness, the good feelings. That's the top seven. But most of the time, people are living down here, okay? So emotional intelligence, once you understand your emotions, and that's what I teach you, reverse engineer how you want to feel, if you're living in a chronic state of fear, anger, blame, worry, doubt, it's okay to have these feelings. You need to have these feelings. You're human. But if you don't know how to process them and get out of them and get into the top seven, You're never going to feel alive and aligned. And this is what I teach people is what are these feelings here to teach you and how can you reverse engineer to get out of them? So if you are interested in coaching in any capacity, I encourage you to get on the wait list. So we often have different cohorts based on um, 
on themes, the time of year, things like that. So you can open your phone camera. It will take you to the page to get on the wait list. You just put your name and your email in there. Uh, we will send you the application. And if you don't know, uh, or if you, uh, don't have your phone open or you can't cause you're looking on your phone, you can go to heatherchauvin.com forward slash mastery. And my work is very, very different. So I'm all about the inner work so that you can get the outer feeling and desire and then attract what you want in your life. So I can help you get the money. I can help you get the time and the energy, but I want you to feel it so you can feel energized, trust yourself, confident, present, and aligned. And if you have any questions at all, you can hit reply to an email. You can DM me on Instagram at Heather Chauvet. But regardless, I just want to say thank you. I would love to personally know what your biggest takeaway was from this quick presentation. Um, you no longer, here, I'm going to go back to the beginning. This is, this is my point. We can no longer pretend we don't have time to take care of ourselves. I'm all about 10 minutes a day. And um, when you learn how to reverse engineer how you want to feel, you have more capacity for more. More time, more energy, more presence for your children. You can be the, the parent, the caregiver that you desire to be so you know how to be 100% present with them. And this is where the magic happens. So I'm raising three boys. I'm taking care of my mother. Um, my husband works within the company with me. And this all started with an 18-year-old pregnant living in her mom's basement on government assistance um, is truly how you show up. So you are not alone. Change is possible. It's emotionally uncomfortable. And it starts on the other side of you getting on that wait list and taking the brave, courageous action to say, I am worthy of feeling good. Because when I feel good, everyone benefits. All right. Have a beautiful day.